Hello, world and universe. I'm Jay Sherm, and in today's episode of Future Tech, I want to talk about what it's going to be like to travel through space on a generational spaceship. And if you're not sure what that means, we're talking about the ones you see in sci-fi movies or shows where they're extremely large ships with thousands of people. And inside of these ships, it's literally like apartments and kitchens and bathrooms and a gym. And it's basically like a small city traveling through space. And the reason I want to talk about this is because... People keep mentioning to me about all the ships going into space to the space station or now going to the moon. And as we know, NASA is going to be shutting off the ISS, the International Space Station, in the next several years. They're going to decommission it. I mean, it's falling apart. It's been up there for a quarter of a century. People don't realize how old it is. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be private space stations that are being built now. And, you know, SpaceX and Blue Origin and all the companies are going to the moon and to Mars. But how do we get to a completely different solar system? How do we get to another Earth-like planet in a different galaxy when these planets are probably 25 trillion miles away? So even if we had, like, a really fast spaceship that goes like 30,000 miles per hour, it's going to take us literally hundreds of thousands of years to get there. So we're not going to survive. And uh, a generational spaceship is meant for a crew of, let's say, a thousand people, all different types of skills. And they have to maintain the ship while surviving long enough to procreate to have a generation born on the ship generational spaceship so now the children of that crew are born on this ship and they now have to take over the duties they're trained from birth in different types of roles and they have to now live on the ship for their entire lives not knowing what it's like to live on earth with the hopes that they will then procreate as they get older and another set of children are born to take over and so on and so forth over and over and over again until finally the ship arrives at its destination. God knows how long that'll take. Uh, Hundreds of years maybe. Could be longer. And then whoever gets to finally land on the planet, (laughs) that generation of children will be the ones to populate the planet. So it's very interesting. And the key question I have in my mind is, will people be willing to sacrifice themselves? Because what they're doing is sacrificing themselves. And what I mean is the middle journey, right? The Not the ones that lived on Earth or the ones that arrived on the planet. It's all the generations in between. Let's say there's 10 generations of people. Let's say it's, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 people along those hundreds of years that have to sacrifice their lives to live on this generational spaceship for humanity to survive. What's it going to be like, man? I mean, think about it. They're going to be living on a ship, born on a ship, dying on a ship. They're not going to ever be able to go outside and see the sunlight. Sure, there's going to be simulations and virtual reality, and by then there's going to be holograms, and they're probably going to have a lot of technology to simulate what it's like on Earth. We've seen this on a lot of different shows and movies. But it's not going to be real life. So I'd be curious to see what it's like. But let's talk about some of the things that this generational spaceship is going to need. I mean, obviously, water is super important, and a human uses about 300, I think, 300 gallons of water a year. So we're going to have to recycle every bit of urine and water waste over and over and over again. So the water filtration system on this generational spaceship has to be incredible. Um, From what I understand, I don't have any kids myself, but I do know that kids benefit from getting dirty. So like having a lot of animals on board in a certain 
place where they can interact with animals and dirt maybe to like I guess boost up their immune system so when they do get to a planet eventually they're not succumbing to possible illnesses or viruses from the dirt or animals that they might encounter on this planet so preparing for that immunity especially over generations they have to keep preparing their kids animals are going to probably be important and also we can bring animals with us kind of like noah's ark maybe we can populate the planet with animals that give us food and and milk and cheese and and you know protein and things like that i think another important piece of this journey is going to be career planning because when you have hundreds or thousands of people on this ship they need to stay busy right they can't just be on the ship and just sitting around watching endless amounts of Netflix, which by then it's probably going to be something else. They'll be able to watch the history of television, but they need to have jobs. And I think that uh, not only the crew roles, like the people that are in charge of the ship, whether it's medics or health or, you know, mechanical, electrical, computer, any of those types of roles are going to be needed. But also I think that maybe what they could do is they can have tests for all the kids that are born for aptitude what what are they passionate about are they creative and also of course unfortunately there's going to be jobs that need to be filled right like so maybe they need cooks maybe they need maintenance maybe they need um anything at all that's that that maybe other people weren't good at or didn't want to do and so every job will have to be filled and i think some jobs will have to be assigned to the next generation and uh that's that that may work it may not i guess we won't know until we find out but people are going to be very important in filling roles so it has to be a, a diverse set of people that originally go on and the people that the generation that follows has to fill the roles that the people before them had so of course medicine is going to be huge because in space on a ship who knows what kind of bacteria or viruses might emerge we need to be ready for that um, immune systems are going to be weakened probably in space. So I think the medical facilities, the health care, all that kind of stuff is going to be really important to maintain generations of people. There's one way of avoiding a lot of issues in generational space travel. We've seen it on the movie Passengers with Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt, where everybody was asleep in these cryo chambers, right? So Imagine if you put a thousand or 10,000 people with all diverse, again, diverse jobs or skills or creativity, freeze them, send them to another planet and tens of years later, or I don't know how many years later, hundreds of years later, you arrive on a planet, you wake up and that's a way to do it too. But we don't have the technology. It could also be a small crew of people maybe 200 people to manage the spaceship and then 20,000 frozen embryos to procreate after arriving at the planet. And then of course the crew would have to procreate in order to keep the crew, uh, the ship maintained, or we could just use robots, artificial intelligent robots that could maintain the ship and maintain the embryos. And hopefully everything, you know, works out and we get to our destination and the robots don't need maintenance. They don't die. They can fix each other. They can build more robots. They can self-propagate, basically. So they can continually repair themselves and maintain the ship and, and ma make sure their embryos are safe until they arrive. Now, if we do go with a generation of people, say 2,000 people or whatnot, the waste product that they give out, meaning their poop, will have to be saved for fertilizer. And we're probably going to have to build many, many, many different types of habitats and farms within the ship in different areas so that we're growing food that we can eat along the way. We're fertilizing the farms and we're basically creating, we're terraforming the ship in a way so that food is there, our nutrition is there. But as we arrive to the planet generations later, we can then plant all of that food on the planet so that we can start populating the planet with our food. So this is going to take, you know, over the course of hundreds of years, imagine how much food we're going to have on this ship. And then, of course, there's the interesting uh, fact that if, the, if it is 2,000 people or even 10,000 people, is dating going to be an option? Are you going to be able to choose the person you procreate with? And it may not work out that way because 
you have to be careful. The first generation could choose, right? But the second generation, if say it's a brother and sister, they can't be together, right? So a geneticist might have to choose the different people that can procreate together. It might have to be done in vitro, like through a test tube in a lab. It might just be a, a more primitive selection process based on data, based on genetics, instead of there won't be any couples, there won't be any marriages, there won't be any dating or love or anything like that. It'll be like person A and person F, you're matched, you have to procreate, and it might not, it might not even be a, a process. It might just be like the guy just gives up his sperm and the girl gives up her egg, and then in the lab, they, they create the babies, and that's it because we don't want inbreeding, right? We don't want like, you know, first cousins becoming mates. And then next thing you know, it just, you know, it deteriorates over time. So it might just have to be a selection process. And all of this sounds a lot of sci-fi. We see it in a lot of movies with people being selected for a lot of different things, but there's a reason for that. When you're dealing with a small population that is going to grow over time, there's a reason for that. So Anyway, these are the things I think about when it comes to generational spaceships. I think it's definitely a possibility if we can't figure out warp speed or light speed travel where we can get from one part of the galaxy to the next in minutes or hours or days. If we can't travel through a wormhole or a black hole, if we can't figure out how to travel through space quickly, we're going to have to take our populations with us on these large generational spaceships. And there's a lot of moving parts associated with it, but it's possible to do. I think that it's going to probably happen in the future if we can't figure out light speed travel. And we're not going to be here to see it. <laughs> and the people that do it are not going to be there to see it either because it's gonna they're going to die on the ship and the next people are going to die on the ship and so on and so forth. So, But I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. What kind of things are going to happen on the ship? What's life going to be like on the ship? And... Tell me your thoughts in the comments. I'd like to hear it. I'm always going to answer you. And as always, I will see you guys in next episode. <laughs>